So welcome everyone to the European Society of Biomechanics webinar series. And today we have the great pleasure to host a webinar about how to use Python scripts to perform medical image processing and bone finite element analysis. And this will be conducted by Professor uh, Dieter Parr. Before starting, I would like to introduce to you uh, the new uh, organizers of the ESB webinar series, Laura La Fuente Gracia and Gianluca Santesarti. They are part of the ESB student committee. And from now on, they will be taking care of the ESB webinar organization. So you have already met Laura during the previous webinar. And today, Gianluca is here and uh, will introduce himself. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, thank you, Chiara, for the kind of introduction. Uh, I'm Gianluca and um, I'm a PhD engineer at the University of Rome Tor Vergata. Uh, previously, uh, I was supporting the conference events organization uh, for the ESB conference. And now um, I'm very happy to, to support these activities uh, about the webinar series. And, uh, but um, uh, with, uh, with Laura, we would like uh, to, thank, uh, to thank very, very much Chiara, Chiara Dazzi for uh, for, uh, for her support uh, to, to these activities uh, so far. Uh, Chiara, she, she is uh, in the ESB student committee too, and, uh, and now and on, uh, uh, she, will, she will care about uh, the you know, students' events uh, organizations during the, the meeting, uh, the annual meeting of the, of the ESB society. Thank you, Chiara. Thank you. It was a great pleasure to... Uh be the organizer of ESB webinar series. So um, as a reminder, all the webinars are uploaded on the ESB YouTube channel where you can find many other videos such as recordings of the journal club sessions or of award presentations. Uh, so we encourage all of you to subscribe to get to know more the activities within the ESB and also feel free to leave comments if you are particularly interested in one topic because we would be happy to organize a webinar about it. So we are ready to start, and it's a great honor for us to introduce to you Professor Dieter Parr. He's currently a full professor at TU Wien and Karl Landsteiner University of Health Sciences in the field of biomechanics, where he's teaching an introductory lecture to mechanical engineering students about Python. During his academic career, he developed the software MED tool that is available at the link that we will post in the chat uh, now. And yes, so the presentation will last about 45 minutes, followed by around 10 minutes of Q&A. Uh, so please, during the talk, type in your questions in the question box so that we can collect them uh, and ask them to Professor Parr afterwards. Uh, we don't want to steal any more time from you, so Professor Parr, the stage is um, yours. Let me... So, good afternoon from my side. So, can you now see the screen? Yes. And the presentation should also be ready now, right? Okay. Yes. Okay, perfect. So, this, uh, could this be moved anywhere else? That's fine. Okay, so, uh, yes, uh, it's my pleasure to talk about uh, something I'm, I'm feeling uh, already since many many years <clears throat> and as you see here uh, after my postdoc time I, I was founding a company and this company is currently uh, selling the software we or mostly I developed over over the last years and now it's distributed over my company but uh, the idea of uh, today's uh, seminar is to give you the, the ideas behind it uh, and so in case you also have similar problem that at least uh, you don't uh, go the same uh, stony way that than I, I uh, uh, had to go many years ago. So it's about automatic execution of uh, Python scripts or any other scripts if you like. And uh, let me first talk a bit about what are Python scripts. So Python scripts are usually, Python is a, a very commonly used programming language um, in, um, in science and it's very simple. It's originally developed from C and uh, it's one recommended language you could learn and it's very simple, similar also to math 
lab or, or other languages. So as a first simple example, if you'd like to calculate uh, uh, the circle area, uh, what you can do is uh, you can type in an Excel or you can simply write a Python script. You uh, you, if you have Python installed on your um, if you have Python installed on your PC, you simply type in Python uh, the name of the script and you give maybe some parameters uh, which is doing something. So what are these parameters? First of all, you have to write a Python code. Uh, I'm not uh, uh, going into the details of which software you have to use and how you do it. So there are already packages available like uh, Anaconda, uh, which you can download and uh, you can type in exactly these things here uh, and try it out. So uh, there are lots of tutorials how to do this, but uh, shortly speaking, you have a parameter and usually you can read this parameter from the command line and arc v. Uh, brackets two means that you took the third uh, the third number here on the line so Python is not counted so it's zero one two that means this number is converted to a float in this derivative so it's actually exactly this one here and, uh, and then you say okay let's uh, compute the, the formula like here the area and then output anything so this is a very simple script who is simply doing a, a numerical computation and as I said here you pass in with these arguments uh, from common uh, uh, numbers and uh, usually of course if you'd like to have these things in a graphic user interface and the thing I will uh, explain today this map tool uh, this graphical interface is nothing else than uh, you don't have to type in these things here on, in, a, in a comment line but you can simply uh, use a graphical uh, interface and therefore you need some, I would say, gluing code or, or gluing uh, uh, things inside this Python script. So uh, this is the basic idea of the script and uh, in, in MedTool you will see you have here like a script browser. I can also simply uh, start MedTool. So I have here already one MedTool open and uh, uh, I'm simply deleting here the script again. If I'm loading a script, uh, the script is in MedTool. Here, uh, a plugin I wrote. And uh, when I'm loading the script, I simply give the script name, uh, which is individual for me. I'm loading the script, and you see here is the name of the script. Here is the, the parameter you have. You could even have a help here if you'd like to. Uh, we can type in here any number. and. What you can do now is you see there was some changes going on here. On the one hand side, you can execute the script either uh, you say here run, the run commands are simply here, and run active means you are running this active script, uh, this one active script. And if I'm performing this, you see the script is doing something here. This script, uh, what is behind here, are simply that what, uh, what you saw before. So this is the pure Python code of uh, the full script, which uh, more or less performing this uh, uh, computation on a command line. And if you do the same thing here in MedTool, you have to write a bit more. Uh, and you see here, it's a bit more of documentation. Uh, there are a few uh, subdivision into, into structures. And you have to have here this interface code. And actually, this is the code so that Metro knows uh, what kind of parameters are coming, like there's a radio seal coming, uh, also what kind of uh, uh, data type is coming. And the same thing also, there is a file entry out. And what you see here, the file entry out is not an obligatory parameter, it's optional, so you can uh, click it on. And if you click it on, what happens uh, if I'm executing the whole thing, I'm writing a file, and this is doing nothing else than I have here a text file uh, then written out and this text file is simply holding maybe some information. So the, the whole process, you have a script, you have parameters to the script which could even uh, uh, optional or obligatory and you have here some output and here you have some tools uh, like an editor which you can use. So this, this is nothing else than um, executing here uh, a Python script uh, as it was shown here. And uh, now, 
how can I now link the scripts and the parameters? So, well, the one, one possibility is, of course, you could hard code your parameters in your scripts. So, for example, here, uh, you see that uh, this parameter here, like the radius, is hard coded. This is, of course, uh, a very bad way of doing this because you have everything in one script. This is good, but whenever there is a change of the parameters, you have to change the script. So this is of course not a good thing. So second possibility is uh, you simply use command line arguments. So that's what uh, you also saw before. That means you can type any kind of command lines uh, arguments. Uh, but of course, uh, it's not very handy to do this by hand because maybe if you have uh, uh, 15 arguments, you have to type in 50 arguments. And even if you have file names, it's quite an ugly way to do this. And uh, another possibility is, of course, to have something like an input deck. So uh, for those who are doing final analysis, uh, uh, you know that there is like an input file format which holds all information of data, but also of, of parameters of running the scripts. Uh, this is, of course, a very compact overview. And the input could be like for this radius example like this. You have here something like this. You give the input deck here, and if you have uh, two or 20 parameters, it doesn't matter, it's only one single file. Uh, so that means um, you, you know exactly uh, what comes in uh, into the script. And uh, another way, and this is the final way I'm explaining, is our graphic user interfaces. And uh, like Metro, what you have, you have a script, you have here uh, a script name, and what you can do actually, you could link now uh, this script with parameters. And uh, the way how this is done in, in that tool is actually quite uh, handy. So if you have now as a, a script like this here, and I'm executing this again, so what I can do, I can say, okay, I have here a parameter and I have a CD run. So this uh, is something like I have a fixed, fixed parameter. I can uh, save this, I can now close this file, I can reopen uh, the things here. And if I'm reopening the things, I have, again, my parameters stored here. And if I'd like to run the script with another parameter and say here simply with another radius, uh, what can be done in MedTool is you have here like a spreadsheet editor. Uh, it's like an Excel file. And you can simply say, OK, I have here a dollar radius. It's an arbitrary name. And you give you the number for the first run, maybe 3.8. And you say, okay, this is my first run. And uh, in my second run, I'd like to run the same thing with 5.6. Then you save this file as I call it here, uh, my parameters, my parameter. And we simply use dot bar as an ending so that we have no conflict with other file formats, but it's up to you. And Finally, here in the run settings, what you have to choose here is the parameter file. And uh, I simply give the parameter file here. And now I can run this in a single run, and it's executed with these parameters. And now if I'm changing it to dollar radius and say, OK, where is this radius in which file? It's actually, it's in the parameter file, in this file here. And then I'm simply running this here with the so-called run parameter study. And if I'm doing so, you see I'm now running two times the scripts. So that means I'm running the script with two different parameters. Uh, and even if I say I'd like to have one parameter more, I'm simply adding up here a parameter with 10.7. I'm saving it. I'm rerunning it again. And now we see we have uh yeah there is something else in here uh, uh, but we have here three runs and can uh, also uh, execute here the oops, uh, sorry cutting this and, uh, so and now i should be able to have here now also the final result. So what we see here, we have a single script. 
we have here, uh, instead of passing the parameters uh, uh, by hand, simply pass in an Excel file. And this is actually quite convenient and that could be a very simple way. And what you see here, Metro is nothing else than handing you the script and also the parameters of the script in this very simple uh, manner. That means, uh, based on that, what are the typical metful features? We're talking about uh, uh, image uh, processing and also finite element uh, modeling, and metro is actually designed for this. That means you, you have some the images. You can do in the same way image processing analysis. You can do meshing and modeling of stuff. Uh, you, you, but you also have a so-called workflow and provenance system, and I will, I will show you uh, in a few minutes, what this means, and so called, I call it script manager. And you can also have user scripts, your own scripts, like the certain area, uh, any kind of other scripts uh, uh, you have. There is a preset of scripts in MedTool already implemented, but you can easily extend this. And you can do, which we saw before, something I call parameter study, that you have uh, uh, scripts uh, with different parameters. So this was a very short introduction. Uh, and what you saw before is what you can do. You can have a single script like this circuit area. Uh, and actually, exactly ex what I showed you before, you have a script name. You can choose parameters. You should always see if you have some automatic execution that you have obligatory parameters and optional par parameters because uh, so that you can switch on off uh, parameters. And uh, you give the parameters names, uh, you link this to an Excel list, uh, and you run through this Excel list so, uh, for every parameter. And uh, the only thing you have to, to set a parameter file. So what are the big, the big uh, pros based on that? You have a, a very simple file, and in Metro we have an XML file, which is storing uh, actually the script itself. That means if I would open this uh, this file, so for those uh, who are familiar with XML, it's a very simple XML file which uh, shows the script names, which shows all entries, and the entries you have a bit more than only the value, you have also the default values, if it's optional, uh, if this, uh, this value is active or not, and so on. Uh, but it's a very XML file, so this is the first part of the information. And uh, the second part is the parameter file. So that means this file. So with these two files, you can do uh, uh, information and you have like uh, already a provenance system. So you know which is parameters did you analyze your, um, your data. So this would be a single script and multiple parameters. Of course, uh, at the end, you don't like to have only a single script. You'd like to have uh, uh, more than one script, and maybe you have something like that. If you have, and here are the, the scripts, like I have here an image processing script, I have here a conversion script which converts something uh, to finite element methods, I have here a solver script on the post processor script, and you have input parameters. And what, what happens is that one script is producing an output which is fed into another script. This is using an output which is fed in, into another script and so on. So, and this very simple uh, workflow you have here uh, could be uh, simply done here in MetTool. I will show you this example in a minute. So we have here one script, which is an image processing script. I give here, for example, my image data. And uh, as a next step, uh, I'm passing this to an output file, and this output file is uh, in, a, in a script which is converting this data uh, to a finite element input deck, and I'm running the input deck, and I'm post-processing it. And uh, as a short demo here, uh, uh, there are lots of uh, examples which are best in, or which are coming with MedTool. So all these examples are also on the, the web. So in the documentation of that tool in the user manual, uh, yeah, there, there are already some webinars. And you can also have here uh, as a short introduction, also the ideas I gave you here uh, of uh, what is the idea behind it. Uh, also, how is the graphic user interface working? So as I said, the MedTool GUI is nothing else than many scripts you have 
and you are having data which are read and written uh, to the storage. And uh, there are many scripts already implemented for image processing, meshing, material mapping, uh, and then then. And there are also examples, and the example uh, I'm showing you now is a simple image processing example. So all the stuff I'm showing here are explained here step by step for those who'd like to, to read it up afterwards. I'm simply opening here uh, this uh, example and uh, with the metal installation, we have all these examples here. Uh, also, and then I'm taking this image processing example here and this uh, image processing example here. Uh, what you see here, there are fields which are uncommented. So what we implemented in metal is a user level. So if I have a simple level, I have not all options. If I'm having an expert level, I have all options flipped on. So for this very simple uh, image processing task. So what we're doing, we're first reading some data. And whenever you do some automated processing, you should be aware what is inside my data uh, stuff. So first, what I'm doing, I'm, I'm let this run. And I'm writing out which, something which we call the mid plane. So uh, now Metool is. Uh, is running and uh, it simply tells me here exactly what it's doing. It's reading some information, some image data. So I'm not going into the details. Uh, uh, this would uh, uh, exceed this frame here. And what I'm doing is I'm only writing out some information. And in Metal, you can simply use a viewer. And in this image processing example, these mid planes are now written. I'm opening one of these mid planes and I see. Okay, this is inside my data set. In the next step, I'm changing the resolution. So I'm switching on the first uh, filter here, which is changing the resolution by a factor of two. So if you'd like to know what is the, uh, exactly the, um, the filter doing, there is a help button here, and it shows you what this stuff is doing here, which is linked uh, also to the documentation. Uh, if you're executing now this single script, uh, what is, is done, there is a first image processing step done and it's changing the size. You could also check this actually here on the display options. Uh, if you uh, go here to the expert level, you could see here the image infos. And actually, if we run the first script again, we see that we have another uh, size of the image here. Uh, it's double that big. I'm running the second one. Again, so it's uh, reducing simply the size. There are also other image processing steps, uh, like there is some cropping done. Uh, and the cropping filter, we simply, uh, you can always see if there is something active here. So you see what's done here. It's cropped by a certain dimension. And uh, then there is some segmentation done in the next step. So it's now a smaller image. We segment something that means uh, simply applying a, a threshold on the data. Uh, the segmentation filter here, we have implemented many segmentation filter. One is a single level threshold, which you might know this is the method of Riddler. And uh, you can simply make this a bit bigger. So it's segmented. And finally, you can also modify the image by adding some, some artificial structures, which is mostly necessary for uh, fine element analysis. And now, uh, this is now multiple scripts. And you see here, I have fixed parameters uh, in, inside my script here. And uh, the first thing, if I say now, we're talking about workflows, automatic execution. Uh, if I'd like to execute all of these things because I modified something like that, you can simply say here, run check. And what's done here now, I'm running every script again you see it here by the flags uh, yellow flag means it's currently under processing and when the flag is green it says it's already done and uh, you see here it's done it, it's running step by step uh, through all steps uh, and if you have always the same output file name you see also here uh, what is changing so, and uh, now if you'd like to combine this, these parameters, you can do it as we saw before, instead of writing here, uh, 
an explicit name, we can define a parameter and we have, can have many names. Of course, we could also have uh, many different uh, cropping uh, or segmentation or whatever parameters uh, so that this is done in an automated, in an automated way. So uh, that's simply like running multiple scripts with multiple parameters. Uh, there are specific scripts, I will, I will show one more then, um, where you can do other steps uh, in, your, in your process. But whenever you're thinking about uh, automated processing, uh, you only have to think about the scripts, the parameters, how can I link them? Uh, it, you also have to think about the whole project. Why? Because whenever you have an automated processing, uh, you have pro and cons. The pro is that you, you're producing a lot of data without any user interaction. The con is you're producing a lot of data. So that means uh, the first thing in an project definition space, you should very carefully think, of course, what kind of input data do I have, scanning data, mechanical testing data, what kind of models would I like to have, how could I check the models, and also how could I document the models. So uh, this is something you have to think about because if you're running 100 image processing steps or 100 finite element, analysis you'd like to see or check for every step what's the outcome and for example here in metal we have a very simple reporting tool so that you can write in a pdf and you can do for every sample one pdf so that, that you can very quickly go over sample by sample and see visually at least if the if if the processing was correct uh, and this is the first the first step the second step of course is uh, you should set up everything and uh, you're setting a working directory. In Metro, it's, it's uh, on the run setting, you set a working directory. And the next thing is you should create a directory structure. And I'd like to quickly show this. Uh, so whenever you do a new project, uh, so you know, whenever you do a new, a new project, uh, you should uh, thinking about, okay, uh, where should I run? And that means what, where is my working directory? So if my working directory, for example, say, okay, here under examples, this is my working directory. And now you'd like to quickly, you can also go to directory manager here. Uh, you quickly can change uh, the working directory. And in this uh, working directory, you could maybe make a directory, my new project. Okay. Then you say, okay, I have a new working directory, my new project, and it's empty. And now it's quite boring when you do a new project that you have to do all the, uh, all the directory structures. So what we have here is an automatic directory structure generation. So this is uh, usually something which say, okay, here in, under A are my scans, under B are image editing, registration, segmentation, meshing, material mapping, boundary conditions, finite element pictures I have, experimental data, documentation, codes I did, other evaluation, data I share with someone, uh, and also where are the metro files. So the first thing you could say, okay, it's a, a project that I don't do, for example, FDA, I don't need this stuff here, I only need this, I don't have experiments, uh, doku yes, code yes, other evaluation and this I don't have, but I have maybe uh, something new, I have, um, um, something which I call the uh, O, uh, something you add uh, this directory, and then if you generate it, you have automatically under my project all this stuff generated in one shot. And now we're also talking about the provenance system because if you have like different projects, or even if you're supervised and have different PhD students and you enforce them for this structure, you can easily look into the work even after several years, and you know exactly where are the uh, where are the, the data. And for example, if you're here under A, and I'm doing the image processing step, so the first thing usually, if you do some kind of image processing, whatever you do here, I call it here processing. So what you see here, 
what Mentor is doing, it's also already suggesting you uh, a script name with underline zero one. You can modify this, of course, and uh, uh, and this script name here you can simply then uh, use here also as a directory here, and um, that's actually quite some some neat stuff that you that you can then have the directories under the uh, under this uh, uh, ace can for example. Yeah, so more or less a side uh, remark, but very important uh, that you're thinking about the directory structure, and uh, then you copy the files and. You should also have something which I called here the info text. So you could have a script which holds information. So you can write in there uh, information which also then stored and documented. And after that, you check what's in there. I showed you this already image processing example. Uh, so that you check, okay, are my input data, the raw data, are these data okay? Maybe you have to convert them, you have to drop them, whatever. And uh, that means step number eight in image processing, you have to do modifications. And uh, that could be like what I already showed you. You have to drop a region, you have to recourse an image, you rotate or register some images. And this was the example I showed to you. That means you're doing automated modifications. So that means if you're thinking about an automated uh, uh, way of doing image processing, uh, in that tool, there are only scripts which are specifically uh, fully automated. So there is no user interaction, and you can rerun the stuff again and again and again, uh, and you will always get the same result. Of course, this is sometimes not very easy because sometimes you have manual interactions, and these manual interactions we solved by having. <coughs> A connection script between that tool and 3D slice. So that means what you can do here is uh, in that tool, uh, and I will not go into this detail, but uh, we have a script which is simply an interface to slicer. And in that tool, you call uh, directly slicer, especially you can call slicer with pre segmented images. For example, here you see we have here a pre segmented uh, uh, image. And we feed this into into slice. So we don't have to when we start the metal scripts. We don't have to load anything in slicer. It's automatically open the slicer GUI with some pre-segmented image. Next, you can do some uh, interactive segmentation. Like finally, you like to have something like this. It's really slicer. And after that, there is a button here. Uh, going back to Met tool. It's closing it, it's saving it, and it's loading this image into Metro. And there is an example which is called 3D Slicer Bridge. I will not uh, show this in detail, only uh, so that you have here an idea. Uh, no. So there is there are also examples, and there is, for example, this uh, Slicer Bridge example. And uh, in this Slicer Bridge example, uh, what is done after checking it? We do some pre segmentation with Map Tool. So we load, load in images and we output images. And these output images are then used here in this script. So when this script is starting, uh, Slicer is uh, started. And uh, yeah, now it's not connected. I don't have the licenses here activated in this version. But um, it's, it would open Slicer. And you could edit slicer, and then after you closing slicer, it's jumping back to the next script. So this was quite a tricky task to do, but in that way you can have an interactive uh, step inside your your automated processing. I would like to say avoid this whenever you can avoid it, because you can then never redo the data again. So uh, this is quite something which is destroying this fully automated pipeline. Nevertheless, uh, it's needed. Uh, that's the reason why we have it also inside uh, Metro. So what's next after image processing? Uh, and now I'm only showing you the steps. So this is like, uh, as a reminder, I'm not going to this details here, 
but the next you have to do the image calibration. That means you have phantoms maybe in your bones and you have to calibrate these things here, uh, like something like this. And there are calibration laws and in Metal there is a, a very simple way of uh, doing this. So there is also an, an example which is called image calibration, showing you step by step how you can calibrate an image and uh, how to get an image which is then transferred from whole suite units to uh, bone mineral densities based on your calibration laws. And this is the this is the basis for the next step. So the next step is uh, maybe you have to segment the image. Here you see, for example, we have a femoral bone. Uh, we do some pre-segmentation, and then we have a very powerful filter uh, which is called the fill algorithm. So it's doing the thing you you see here. It's uh, more or less detecting the bone and also, uh, this algorithm is able to detect cortical shells. So this is uh, quite some fancy thing, and it's really on one click. So you don't have to do something uh, interactively. So it's really segmenting, even as you see here, ugly data uh, automatically. And uh, this is this fill option in MET. Uh, of course, you can do the interactive segmentation as a short as we saw before with 3D slicer or something else. And uh, then you can also do some modification usually in finite element models. We have to add embeddings or something like that. And there you have two strategies. Either you do it everything based on images or you do it by geometry. So you can also have like in that tool that you combine image and geometry. Uh, so there are also options, to, for example, place implants inside this, this font. Yeah, uh, FE meshing, uh, also a few words on that. So there's a block measure. So when you do, do an automatic meshing, either when you have a segmented or labeled image and you get uh, already the mesh out of it, as, as it's shown uh, here. Uh, even we can do uh, quite nicer meshes here with uh, the bone measure, and uh, but also can do micro element models with extremely high resolution uh, message, me meshes, sorry. Uh, and convert this into different uh, input tech uh, formats. There's also uh, ways uh, how to do this uh, based on, on the meshes. After that, you have to do material mapping. Uh, usually, you have to map the gray value into a stiffness. Uh, so, there are several tools how to do this. So, there are also specific mapping laws, uh, isotropic or autotropic laws. But again, I will not go into this detail because this is not the, the main focus of, of this webinar. So uh, maybe you already have a map, maybe you already have a measure uh, available. And uh, after that, you're creating uh, the finite element model. And I only like to show you a very simple way how we did it. Uh, and the very simple way how you can do it, there is a, a script. Uh, here in map tool which I call image to fe and uh, this is a quite handy thing uh, so first of all when you when you start doing a finite element model uh, is you have to first take some kind of an image and uh, here what is the, the input image image to fe uh, so this is uh, our input image So it's a very simple uh, trabecular bone uh, image uh, with some embeddings. And in this image to FE example, and there you see how you convert an image to a finite element model. You have to give the image uh, and you have to give the solver date. Here, for example, input is abacus or calculix. And uh, after that, you are have to define material behaviors. And, and what we are doing here, very simple, is say based on the gray value, and you see here the gray values from 1 to 250. I'd like to have uh, uh, an e modulus of 1000. So this is not a gray level dependent uh, card generation, which could be also done here, but it's fixed. And 255, this is the, the, the white layer here, is uh, maybe something very stiff. But you can also use a power law here. So a very simple power law, which is currently switched off. Then you generate uh, node sets on the top and bottom or something like this. 
uh, you are applied boundary conditions. For example, here all nodes uh, bottom are fixed and all node tops are moving down. And uh, you define some analysis steps, which are currently all are default steps. And uh, if you let the generation uh, run here, so we are generating here around 60,000 nodes, uh, which is a very small model and it's also done very quickly. And after that, you have an input deck which you could solve. And uh, one way is to use Calculix directly in Netpool. So I'm starting here the solar, which is um, very similar to Abacus. It's not running the model. And uh, you're generating here the output deck. So this is a quite uh, a fast way of doing it, even on my, on my laptop here, which is not very uh, powerful, but uh, it's uh, finishing the job uh, very quickly and writing all the data. We also implemented here a transformation to part of you or the VTK, if you like to, of the output data, or you simply use uh, CGX, which is a very simple way of uh, uh, looking into this into this uh, uh, results. This is also where you can say, okay, I'd like to have the stresses and uh, I'd like to have the formisa stresses. Uh, very simple way. Another way, uh, if you'd like to have it more modern, which also works uh, quite well uh, in an interactive way, there is a very cool software which I called, uh, which is called Prevco uh, Max. And uh, this uh, uh, Prevco Max uh, software is, uh, so I have it already installed here. Uh, it's for free, and uh, this looks uh, quite similar to Abacus CAE. The solar behind it is uh, Calculix, and uh, what you can do here when you generate it, for example, input text, uh, you can import the input text, including material cards and all these things, and maybe do some more fancy uh, changing of stuff, uh, which you could not do in an automated way. Uh, yeah, it takes a couple of uh, uh, of seconds to load this, the whole thing, but only to give you a demo, you can say, okay, I'd like to have a new databases, and uh, I'm now importing uh, the, the input deck I generated before. Uh, so it's a USB webinar here, examples, uh, image to FEA. Uh, supported file models. Oh, sorry, that was the input deck. Uh, import. So, I have this input file here. And uh, in the webinar, from the examples from this image to FA, no. did they not generate the input deck? Uh, settings uh, and the net tool. So it's an input. So this should be the input deck. It's written in it's in there. So it seems I'm having a wrong. That was interestingly, usually it should show me here uh, the, the input deck. So, no idea why. Maybe I can simply uh, do it here. Oh, no. I, I'm on the wrong folder. Anyway, so I have to check up which folder I'm having here. I'm having here. Okay, it's in this folder. Got it. So import, so final trial, map tool, examples, uh, image to FEA, here it is. Uh, we're importing this example, and the good thing is that you see here it's importing all solar cards. And for those who are, yeah, uh, 
who know uh, Avaco CAE, you simply have here uh, the thing uh, which is uh, usually exactly this model. You can solve it in also here, and uh, uh, usually it should be able to run the analysis, uh, hopefully. And yeah, there was one issue here. Yeah, so small thing, I, uh, but um, usually it's uh, compatible and it's uh, simply running the stuff uh, and you can also get then the, the results. But I will not uh, explore this more because of the, the length of time. Good. Uh, so this is running the thing and getting then also here the output like uh, you can uh, having something like this, you already know, but you can also have other output data which you can can use uh, and uh, also all the other stuff. Yes, so this was uh, a short uh, view into how you can automatically uh, execute image processing steps, uh, how you can automatically generate fine abandonment models. Of course, this is a huge field. Uh, and uh, I only can uh, uh, give impressions to you. And now I'm open for questions. So maybe specific questions. What can uh, what can you do with your specific task or uh, uh, other questions you have? So now I'm I'm happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much, uh, Professor, for the uh, uh, very interesting presentation. Mm, there are uh, any questions from the audience? Uh, if so, you can uh, type your question in the chat. And uh, in the meanwhile, uh, uh, Professor, I have a curiosity, and maybe in the in the before the last slide, uh, how uh, can you man manage uh, the post processing uh, phase uh, with uh, MedTool with uh, this um, software? Yeah, so usually there are there are many scripts uh, available for this. Uh, so we can here do some solving, uh, calculate abacus okay. uh, stuff. And depending on what kind of solar you're using, there are many scripts uh, for Abacus and Calculix. So on the one hand side, if you are uh, interested in numerical data, we have some things which we call force displacement reader. If you have like uh, reference nodes or node sets, which can be automatically processed. Uh, there are also like uh, field and history readers for those who know Abacus, know what this means. Similar also for Calculix. Uh, Whenever you say, okay, I'd like to do a post-processing, for example, I'm running 100 uh, Abacus models and I'd like to making screenshots uh, from, from my model, from sections, whatever, what you can do in Abacus, you can, uh, you can do a macro and in the macro you, you click through the steps of your processing. And uh, this can be stored in a Python format and you simply make them a plugin which I currently don't have here, but you can make an, a plugin here. And in this plugin, whenever Met tool, uh, for example, I say, okay, there is a, an Abacus solving step. And after the Abacus run step, I have my own plugin, which calls Abacus with the no GUI option. That means not running up the GUI, but doing this macro, like uh, loading a model, making this view, uh, making a screenshot, so starting the screenshot in a, in a specific uh, uh, file, then this can be integrated into this workflow. Okay. But this has to be done once by the user. Yeah. Okay. So, so, um, so the, there is a direct communication between Met Tool and uh, the Abacus uh, result. Uh, maybe. Uh, no, it's like you you can call like an Abacus. You have the so-called Abacus Python, and there is a way in Abacus that you can call a script from a command line with parameters. Uh, with not uh, without starting the GUI. Okay. So the Abacus CA is not is not started. Uh, but this is an Abacus command, and in MedTool you can also use uh, Abacus Abacus specific scripts. Okay. Even in MedTool you, you can use scripts which are written in C plus plus or in Fortran or something like that. Uh, when you are uh, actually here, this is a script which is using Abacus Python as a as a running command. Uh, and here is the Abacus, Abacus command. 
but there are scripts inside here which are not Python scripts. So that means whenever you add a plugin, uh, you say here the script language. So we have Python. Uh, uh, we can have an executable. Executable means uh, it's a C++ compiled thing or Fortran compiled thing, or you can uh, use and user means you're using a user specific Python. Uh, in this case, we are expecting also a run command from from here, which is an exit command. So this is these are different ways of uh, scripts you can uh, integrate in, in, in MedTool, but also in your pipeline, uh, your FEA software should be able to have some scripting possibilities. So that's that's something which is necessary to do to an automated uh, post processing with your data. Okay, thank you. Yeah, come. Um, okay, so far I don't see some questions. Chiara, uh, do you? No, there are no questions so far. So, okay. yes, please, you, there are still some minutes. So, if you have any questions, just write them in the chat. And meanwhile, I have a, also a curiosity that maybe might be helpful to know for the attendees um, are there uh, any uh, communities or a specific documentation that they can use to learn how to use my tool or if they have any issues how can they um, approach yeah. so, uh, uh, actually the med tool is a is a, a tool which comes from university and uh, uh, so what we are currently doing is there is some collaboration with our group our uh, people are kind of invited for example to come over here or that we are making them access uh, to these things, even to many scripts which are not in, in inside MedTool. So uh, looking up some some papers and they say, okay, this is a cool method. Uh, I would like to, to use a similar thing. Simply contact me, and if, uh, there is a community, but depending on the task. So we have a quite a big uh, community in anthropology. Uh, they are using MedTool for our uh, processing, image processing, and also evaluation of uh, uh, CT-based morphometry of, uh, of uh, bones, very old bones or fossils. Uh, and there is a community, uh, and they are working inside. Uh, there are a few people who are using it also uh, doing final element models, I would say a handful. Uh, and in case you'd like to, to come into this, uh, simply give me a thing and then we can discuss what is the best way uh, uh, how to get into this uh, uh, because also what kind of data most, the, the first big issue is the data, right? So many people, especially young scientists, they don't have access to data. Uh, so this is the first big step and uh, after that uh, to be able to process this data uh, we are always happy to collaborate and, uh, and introduce people, having them here for, for one, two weeks uh, and giving them an idea of, uh, of how these things are working. It's not straightforward, it needs time, but uh, uh, if people are interested in, even if you say I don't like to use Med tool, but I only like to, to, to do my own tool, I'm, I'm also happy for this. Uh, if people would like to develop their own stuff, it's always good to know how other tools are working. Uh, so. I'm happy to, to show them what we did and, and how it's working. So there's nothing to be, be hidden by us. Thank you. Um, um, professor, in case that um, um, someone would like to use a uh, uh, med tool, there is a free trial, a free trial until uh, 2023, right? Uh, so for those who'd like to try it out, yeah, they simply give me a, a ping as it's written also in the in the announcement, and you get the uh, uh, access. Now the the current trial runs till February, so uh, plenty of time over Christmas uh, to to get some ideas. Uh, and as I said, it's uh, we are open. We are a scientific community, uh, uh, and uh, we are open to discuss things uh, and. Uh, and see how we can cooperate. Yeah, if we can help. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Welcome.
I was wondering, because uh, we have mentioned that it can be linked to Abacus, uh, mm -hmm. but can it, and I saw that there is the direct option to um, uh, prepare everything for, for Abacus, but can it also be linked to any other also commercial finite element uh, solver? Uh, the output formats we have are currently uh, Abacus. We also have uh, formats uh, CPO, uh, but only matches and also having uh, output to um, a hyper mesh. That means the pen format. Actually, if it's a quite huge task to do all this conversation. So, so that you simply read in an Abacus input deck and convert it to, to whatever you'd like to write. I can imagine, I'm not sure, I'm not using ANSYS, but maybe ANSYS has also like readers in it that you can then read in Abacus input text. They are not that hard to translate. Uh, so, uh, but doing it for all the commercial packages is a huge task. And uh, I would say Abacus is in our world quite a common uh, format and also Calculix is using Abacus format. Uh, although it's not Abacus, so Calculix is, is a totally different uh, code. Uh, so I would say simply when you when you know I'd like to convert it to this, see if you if you if you uh, uh, can use uh, Abacus, and even if you say okay, uh, I, I'd like to try out stuff. It's always a good starting point uh, to, to start with Calculix because it's free. You don't have to do anything, and with this great for marks, you can even have a, a quite a cool uh, pre and post process. So that's 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 the way how we are doing it. Yeah. Okay. Clear. Thanks. Okay. Okay. I still don't see any questions. Um, but yeah, the. Um, Webinar will be uploaded on the ESP YouTube channel. So if you have any questions, just uh, approach uh, approach us or comment on under the video, and we will um, get back to you. And yeah, and also the website of the tool is in the chat. So feel free to go to the website and have a look. And yeah, Jaluka, if you want to close the webinar. Uh, yes, uh, thank you everybody uh, to, for, to come here uh, for, the webinar, uh, for the webinar and thank you so much professor for your availability and uh, for the interesting uh, talk about math. Okay. okay, so thank you for inviting me and for this uh, introduction and uh, the guiding to this webinar. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.